J.K. Rowling is one of the most successful authors in the history of publishing. And for the past 25 years, she's also been one of the most beloved. Her books have taught tens of millions of children worldwide about virtues like loyalty and courage, about the inclusion of outsiders and the celebration of difference. But in the summer of 2020, Rowling published a string of tweets about one of the most polarizing subjects in society right now, sex and gender. She waded into a conflict about transgender rights and the way she believed some activists were eroding hard-won rights for women. There was an explosive reaction to Rowling's tweets, which led many, including lifelong fans of her work, to condemn her and to call for her books to be banned, boycotted, and in some cases, burned. So let me talk about the infamous book burning video for a second. I am not just offended by what J.K. Rowling says. I am fearful because of what she is promoting on her platform. J.K. Rowling is literally putting trans lives at further risk. She just is. It's disgusting and it's problematic. I mean, let's face it, Hermione would punch this woman in the face right now. The Harry Potter franchise is literally making this world unsafe for kids today. Rowling was denounced by people she'd worked with for years, by staff at her publishers, and by human rights organizations that had once lauded her. Actors who had grown up on the Harry Potter film sets, people she had known since they were children, distanced themselves from her. Die-hard fans got their Harry Potter tattoos removed. Some called for anyone supporting Rowling, even in small ways, to be fired from their jobs. The condemnation moved to rallies, where Rowling became a symbol. My name is Megan, and I spent the first 26 years of my life in a strict, fundamentalist Christian community. The beliefs of my church were the complete embodiment of my identity and my worldview. My family taught me that we were on a mission from God Himself, warning the world that they were going to hell if they didn't repent and live as we lived. And I was a true believer, certain that I was 100% right. Until I wasn't. Ten years ago, even though I knew it would cost me almost every relationship I had, including with my parents, who I love so much, I left. I've spent the decades since investigating belief and how it compels us to act and identify and how it colors and shapes the world we inhabit. And reading Rowling's tweets and then her transformation in the eyes of many who had loved her It surprised me, because growing up, it was my community that thought J.K. Rowling was evil, and it was other Christian fundamentalists who had amassed in force to condemn Rowling and to call her work dangerous. The Harry Potter books are mainstreaming witchcraft to our children. They had denounced her. They tried to ban Harry Potter from schools and libraries, and in some cases... They burned her books. God hates this. I mean, he really hates it. It's darkness, and he is light. It is evil. It's a stepping stone, kind of like marijuana leading to crack. The little kids, they don't know the difference. The adults do, and that's a shame on those parents to have their little kids read it. When their kids commit suicide, I told them so. They've been warned. Despite its unparalleled popularity, Harry Potter is actually among the most banned books of the 21st century. And Rowling, even though she's inspired profound adoration throughout her career with fans all over the planet, she's also been the subject of intense, widespread, and vocal backlashes from people whose politics could not be more at odds. And for the past year, I've been trying to figure out why. What is it about this woman and her work that has captured the ire of very different groups of people across time? How did Rowling understand her critics? And what did she think would happen when she sent those tweets? And so I decided to write her a letter. I explained who I was and what I was trying to understand. 
and then I sent it off to her in Scotland. And to my surprise, I heard back. I never set out to upset anyone. However, I was not uncomfortable with getting off my pedestal. And what has interested me over the last 10 years, and certainly in the last few years, the last two, three years, particularly on social media, you've ruined your legacy. Oh, you could have been beloved forever, but you chose to say this. And I think you could not have misunderstood me more profoundly. I do not walk around my house thinking about my legacy. You know, my, I, what a pompous way to live your life walking around thinking, what will my legacy be? Whatever, I'll be dead. I care about now. I care about the living. After I left Rowling's home, I spoke to reporters and historians, transgender adults, teens and advocates, doctors and lawyers, and many of Rowling's critics, including some who supported book bans. And one of the things that stood out to me was how people on all sides of this conflict felt so under attack, so threatened, that they invoked the language of witch hunts, even as they vehemently disagreed on who was the witch and who was the mob lighting the fire. I'm Megan Phelps Roper, and these are the Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. <laughs> 